Good evening and welcome to the um, superintendent contract subcommittee meeting, uh, January 12th of 2021 for the Brockton School Committee. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL chapter 30A section 20 pursuant to that order public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting laws requirement that meetings be held in public places openly and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 9. The, the public can access this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. All right. And before we get started, we'll do a roll call vote to establish a quorum. Uh, Mayor Sullivan. Here. And the Vice Chair D'Agostino is here. Um, Ms. Asak. Here. Mrs. Mendez. Here. Mr. Minicello. Here. Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Here. Okay. We are a quorum. All right, we have two items on the agenda for this uh, this evening's meeting. Uh, the first, uh, the superintendent evaluation review, and then uh, any other business to come before the uh, contract subcommittee meeting. Um, so I will see if, and uh, hopefully this goes better than our technology uh, issues so far tonight. Let's hope this goes a little bit better, but I'm gonna try and share my screen as I have a, a PowerPoint and I wanna thank uh, Michelle Connors, uh, Dr. Connors and uh, uh, Mrs. Kopp for their help with it. Um, and before I get started, I actually wanna just make a quick comment. I wanna thank all of you um, for taking the time to put, I know a lot of thoughtful consideration went into the superintendent's evaluation as it always does. It's something that we, it's one of our most important responsibilities as school committee members. I know we all take it very seriously and, and put a lot of time and thought um, into it. And uh, so I appreciate the effort of all of the committee members. And, and again, <clears throat> um, you know, Dr. Connors and, and Mrs. Kopp who helped us, um, you know, with that process and facilitating the process as well. So I appreciate their assistance. And I would uh, be remiss if I left out Mr. Petronio, our, our number cruncher, they had to take all of that data and um, you know crunch the numbers to see where we where we end up ultimately um, for the final you know score of the evaluation, if you will. So uh, again, a lot of time and effort from a lot of people in this process. So I just wanted to make that mention and, and thank everybody for their part in that. So let's see how this screen share goes. Let's see if I can share the right screen. Does everybody see a PowerPoint? No? I do, I see it. Okay, you all see PowerPoint? Yep. Yes, yep. we see it. All right. We all see it. Very good. Okay, so. All right, hopefully you're all still looking at PowerPoint. <laughs> um, yep, still there. All right, awesome, We're thank you. There. Good, all right. Um, so this is basically, whoop, all right, going a little fast here. This is the, um, the superintendent um, evaluation for 2019-2020 cycle. Um, and so we'll just kind of go through um, each section and I'll review it. Um, and then uh, I was thinking maybe, you know, at the end, you know, the committee give everybody an opportunity to, uh, you know, make any comment that they want, uh, um, you know, and as well as the superintendent too. So, all right, 
So um, the superintendent is evaluated um, on obviously progress towards the achievement of several goals that are kind of determined ahead of time and, and set um, you know, ahead of time. Um, and student learning goal, there's professional practice goals and there's district improvement goals. Um, performance on each of these standards um, is in the DESE standard and indicators of effective administrative leadership rubric. Um, and then we'll, we'll look at that rubric in just a second. Um, you know, but there's a self-assessment part of it, a summative evaluation, uh, formative assessment evaluation, um, analysis, goal setting, and the plan. Yes, I'm aware I'm reading these in reverse, um, and then the implementation of the plan, and then ultimately we get to this point. Um, all right, so the superintendent's rubric update, this is the July 9, 2019 update. Um, and so we look at standard one, the instructional leadership and uh, there's a curriculum indicator, um, an instruction indicator, and, and we dig into student engagement, uh, quality and effective, uh, quality and effort of work and meeting diverse needs, the assessment indicator, uh, evaluation indicator, and then data informed decision making indicator as well. Um, the second standard management and operations. And again, we, we look into the environment relating to plans, procedures, routines, operational systems, uh, social, emotional well-being of students, health and safety, uh, human resource and development indicator, recruitment and hiring strategies and practices, um, scheduling and management uh, information systems indicator, again, time for teaching and learning and collaboration. Um, and again, there's the law ethics and policies indicator as well as fiscal systems indicator as well. Um, then standard three is family and community engagement. Again, we have the engagement indicator, sharing responsibility indicator, and a communication indicator, um, as well as family concerns indicator. Um, and then standard four, professional culture. Um, so commitment to high standards indicator. Uh, mission and core values comes under that uh, indicator. Um, cultural proficiency indicator, policies and practices. Uh, we look at the communications indicator, literally communication skills, continuing learning indicator, and this is of staff and the administrators, um, and shared vision indicator. Um, and the, you know that relates to the development of the indicator. Um, managing conflict is the response to disagreement and, and, and conflict resolution and consensus building indicator. All right. Um, so just an overview of the process. Um, so we had the introduction of the evaluation process to the school committee. We had an entry plan to remote learning plan, end of cycle summative evaluation report. Um, then we have significant evidence. This occurred back in July and August. And then the report of the findings and ratings that we're doing this evening. Okay. So let's look at the, the student learning goal. So um, connected to the following standards in the rubric is this student learning goal of ensure students have uh, access to high quality instruction and environment in an environment that prepares them for college and career and reflects their perspectives on curricula, extracurricular opportunities, facilities and other issues that impact their learning. All right, and as you can see, we go into each standard within that goal and, and um, we'll look at what some of the responses were. Um, so on this particular student learning goal, um, so, and again, you'll notice the members of the committee who are newer, um, this is kind of a summary of some of the responses. It's not intended to be everybody's response um, put in here for this presentation, so. Um, we try and take the, the highlight reel, if you will, of all of your comments collectively from the individual evals. Superintendent Thomas looked at implementing high quality professional development for his teachers and administrators and works with six elementary and four middle schools in turnaround. Uh, another response, the superintendent formed the new, district, uh, the new district design team to review and reviewed the infrastructure of the Office of Teaching and Learning. Um, 
he had to, on a moment's notice, find a way to educate 16,000 students who were at home. Brockton was not a one-to-one -one device district. Under the superintendent's leadership, we rolled out remote learning and distributed materials. His goal of ensuring that students have, high, have access to high quality instruction in an environment that prepares them for college and career has received some progress because the district has been providing ongoing professional development for teachers and administration. However, the district has not ensured that all students have equitable access to pursue a range of rigorous coursework and learning experiences. This is evident in our TAG district program where it's only offered at two of our schools. And lastly, there is a lack of common interim assessments aligned to grade level standards, which see, leads to uneven knowledge among student learning. So again, this is some of the comments from um, the members of the committee and the evaluations. The overall rating for this goal was that he, the superintendent met this goal. All right, uh, build a collaborative professional culture in which all stakeholders are invested in a shared vision that prioritizes student academic success and social emotional wellness. And again, uh, within the rubric, we mentioned, you know, that each of those standards have to be looked at. <clears throat> so Superintendent Thomas is focused on creating the building blocks for success. He works diligently with the school committee members and city leaders. He has regular meetings with the BEA leadership, staff, and students. Another comment, the superintendent has established and maintained a professional culture as to, as to stakeholders throughout our community. Throughout the pandemic, he has continued to value input and collaboration with both individuals and groups who share and prioritize the intellectual, social, and mental well-being of our students. Collaboration is one of our one of Superintendent Thomas's biggest strengths. The district has tried to provide different ways to support families and students with social emotional wellness. The overall rating for the professional practice goal is that the superintendent met the goal. Okay. Um, so in culture and context, review the organizational climate and culture in the Brockton Public Schools and its impact on the instructional environment. Uh, again, we have those same standards um, from the uh, DESE rubric. Under the leadership of Superintendent Thomas, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Steering Committee was formed. This committee worked to have the staff complete a two-part training on making sure there is equity in our curriculum materials and instructional practices. The district has taken initial steps to increase staff's understanding of issues related to equity and diversity. Educators are in the early stages of making curricular resources more culturally relevant. The superintendent needs time to build climate and culture under normal conditions. However, he is doing his best under the current conditions. He continues to be in favor of implementing and crafting improvements to areas involving, involving culture, climate, and race in order to improve the district moving forward. So the rating for district goal one is significant progress slash met. So uh, what happened here, whoop, um, there are, including the mayor, there are eight people that evaluate seven school committee members and the mayor. And, and so this went four and four. Four said met that the superintendent met the, the goal and four said that there was significant progress towards the goal. All right, so district goal two, uh, organizational efficiency and effectiveness. Ensure organizational efficiency and effectiveness to streamline operations and support all schools. Uh, this is connected to the second standard, the management and operations standard in the rubric. Superintendent Thomas works in a collaborative manner that fosters input or fosters support throughout the school district. Dealing with remote learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic has been an extreme challenge, but Mike has worked diligently to handle the crisis as it impacts BPS students, parents, and staff. Another comment, Superintendent Thomas has amazing communication skills, which assists in articulating to the staff at central office about how they will move forward and work together under his leadership. 
the superintendent needs time to create organizational efficiency and effectiveness under normal conditions. However, he is doing his best under the current conditions. And the rating on this goal is significant progress. District goal three, operations and finance. Strengthen operations and financial or finance effectiveness, fiscal, human resources, facilities, communications, transportation, and informational technology. This goal connects to standard two, management and operations. So on this one, we had several comments. Uh, Superintendent Thomas looked at, the, looked at older school buildings to see where repairs are needed. He felt this will ensure adequate teaching and learning space and increased enrollment. The superintendent looked at with Chief Financial Officer Aldo Petronio and the school committee a means of starting to purchase buses for the district in order to lessen the large financial strain on busing costs for the district. Laptops were purchased under the CARES Act to get the district to a level of one-to-one -one devices for all students. A statement of interest was submitted to the MSBA for Brockton High School, which is in need of repair. The district deployed 16,000 devices and thousands of free internet devices for students, leading us to becoming a fully remote district in a few short months. The superintendent and his communication director have worked together to uh, gather data from parents, students, and staff members. They work together to make sure communication out to all stakeholders is in a timely fashion and is informative. The superintendent has strengthened finance, HR, and facilities by letting them do their job, offering assistance and support where needed. And the rating for District Goal 3 is that the superintendent met the goal. All right, instructional leadership. The education leader promotes the learning and growth of all students and the success of all staff by cultivating a shared vision that makes powerful teaching and learning the central focus of schooling. Uh, so we had uh, one comment, Superintendent Thomas is an advocate and possesses a vision of success. It would be beneficial and helpful to bring data to the school committee so the decisions are data driven rather than anecdotal. The district has not ensured that all students uh, have equitable access to pursue a range of rigorous coursework and learning experiences. There is a lack of common in term assessments assigned with grade level standards, which leads to uneven knowledge among students. So for the instructional leadership um, standard, uh, the overall score was proficient. Management on operations. Um, hang on one second. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, I think I went the wrong way. Okay, sorry, lost my lost my train of thought here. Um, all right, so wait a minute. There we go. All right, promotes learning and growth of all students and the success of staff by ensuring a safe, efficient, effective learning environment, using resources to implement appropriate curriculum, staffing, and scheduling. Superintendent Thomas is always working to enhance the BPS experience. He has had numerous meetings with city leaders and is not hesitant to include other experts, educational lawyers, HR, fiscal, business operations, et cetera, uh, in the conversation to bring additional skill sets offering, additional skill set offerings to the discussion. This is an excellent approach and is very beneficial. Alice training was implemented for all staff and was offered to the school committee by Officer uh, Verdaro. Alice training stands for alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. Uh, Superintendent Thomas realized that in order to succeed, staff and students must feel safe during the school day. Uh, and the rating for standard two management and operations is proficient. Standard three, family and community engagement. So on this one, we look at promotes the learning and growth of all students and the success of all staff through effective partnerships with families, community organizations, and other stakeholders that support the mission of the school district. Um, so on this one, Superintendent Thomas formed a parent advisory group that brought together parents with differing viewpoints about the schools to the table. This group said 
uh, this group, he said, will work together to provide feedback and share insight that will help the BPS communicate with transparency and more effectively and meet the needs of the families of Brockton. This group was responsible for planning uh, and opening the BPS Community Center at North Middle School. Family surveys are communicated in a language that they understand. Superintendent Thomas is very communicative and usually responds quickly or has someone in his office respond with any questions or concerns. In March, when schools were forced to shut down because of the pandemic, he supported families in connecting to the grab and go food program in 10 different locations when necessary, coordinated delivery of meals and other supplies to homebound families. Um, the final comment, a rating of needs improvement due to the fact that COVID-19 does not allow the su superintendent Thomas to engage in a so-called normal fashion. That being said, he's excelled in open communications with parents, students, and staff via social media and informative robocalls during this pandemic. He has also been creative by providing information in multiple languages to families via our food uh, sites at various school locations. And the rating for overall rating for standard two family and community engagement is proficient. Under professional culture, we wanna look at promotes success for all students by nurturing and sustaining a school culture of reflective practice, high expectations and continuous learning for staff. The superintendent's approach in all of these areas has really changed the professional culture in Brockton. When I hear principals talk about meetings with their staff where they see progress and teachers say, it's not good enough, we can do better. I see this as an indicator of the success thus far in this standard. Superintendent Thomas is, a, is great at, at expressing his vision for the future of Brockton Public Schools. He fosters a culture that enhances communication, learning, and goals. In addition, he is not afraid to acknowledge when things need to be improved. And the overall rating for professional culture is proficient. So the overall rating is again, taking all of these different standards and putting them into one final overall rating. Um, and so um, I'll give you a review, some of the comments that came from the overall rating. Superintendent Thomas is a tireless leader of Brockton Public Schools. It has been a real pleasure to work with Mike. He is a true champion for the Brockton Public Schools or BPS and the city of Brockton. Uh, the superintendent, his team and the school committee are working on the Student Opportunity Act that will bring increased chapter 70 funding and will need all stakeholders contributing in order to move the district forward. The leadership and accomplishments of this district during these unprecedented times under this superintendent is proof enough. Superintendent Thomas is the leader the district needed for this place in time where we are in. If he can lead us through this, I know he will bring this district to impressive places with his collaborative approach, high expectations for teachers, students, administrators, unions, and yes, even the school committee. A vital part of the buy-in is that everyone in the district knows Mike has high expectations, but they respect him and will work harder because everyone knows he will stand right next to you, roll up his sleeves, and get to work with you. No district was prepared to move forward with a virtual format due to this unexpected and unfortunate COVID-19 pandemic. The superintendent through his leadership and direction introduced one-to-one -one devices, remote learning platforms, remote teaching, accompanying curriculum and technological support across our 15,000 plus student school system. This year has been very hard for any superintendent due to the global pandemic. And to evaluate the super, superintendent Thomas using this language that we use during normal times has not been an easy task. However, during these times, he has demonstrated his leadership skills by effectively collaborating with different stakeholders and making sure that the district is putting processes in place and policies that are being shifted or made to adapt to the remote learning setting. One of his biggest strengths are his communication skills and making sure everybody gets the right information. Superintendent Thomas has been advocating and pushing the Student Opportunity Act and different grants. He is very inclusive and, collabor and a collaborative leader, especially during these unprecedented uh, times where he values the input of all. And our overall rating um, cumulatively um, for the superintendent is proficient. 
All right. So from here, you know, next steps, you know, again, we still have, we're looking at the district review and incorporating that into upcoming goals and our partnership with DESE. We'll see what happens with the Student Opportunity Act. Um, and, and really the, the main thing coming up now is to um, develop, um, we're not gonna do this right this second, but develop and approve the 2020-2021 district goals. Um, and, and this evaluation will be part of, you know, what the superintendent will use and, and to, to put that together. Um, all right, let me see if I can go back to normal Zoom here. All right, so um, also the way the superintendent's contract works, when we give all these different scores as we're going along, there is a formula, um, and, and that's why I thanked Aldo for his work on this, um, and when he plugs all that information in, out comes the amount of uh, the superintendent's uh, raise according to his contract. And so based on the evaluation criteria, uh, this evaluation would grant Superintendent Thomas a 2.8% pay raise. Um, it's a, on a scale of one to four. Um, so at this point, um, unless you all really enjoy the sound of my voice, uh, does any member of the committee um, want to make, well, first, to super, uh, Superintendent Thomas, do you want to make a comment? No, Mr. D Diaz, you know, I'll wait for, yeah, of course, but I'll wait for the rest of the, I'll wait for okay. the yeah. All right. I'll go with, I can go at the end. Thank you. Sounds good. All right. So is there any members of the committee that would like to comment? Mrs. Sullivan, please. Hi. Um, I, I just wanted to um, add a little bit more on the um, educational pathways that exist for mm -hmm. student success and prepare students for college and career has been something that the Brockton Public Schools has always been very strong in. Um, the number of programs that they offer, um, Champion High School, the Edison Academy, vocational programs, they have award winning uh, music, drama, and sports programs that I believe are nationally recognized. Um, they have AP classes, um, middle school now, um, currently, their ELA and math curriculums are going to go across all middle schools, and I believe the science too. And we also now have free preschool, the tag for gifted students, which students have to test into that. And also, I believe it's by a teacher recommendation. Um, and our students go on to very, um, you know, very good <coughs> colleges like Harvard, Brandeis, Curry, to name a few. Um, and we also have the Global Learning School, which is the George School with the three languages. So I just wanted to add in that we have a lot of programs that other districts don't offer. Um, and I believe we've made a lot of progress in college and career. So I just wanted to add that in. Um, and the TAG program is only, you know, they do have to test into that. So it wouldn't be held at all schools. It would only be held at certain schools because it's only certain students that attend it. And I thought it was a very good evaluation. Thank you, Superintendent Thomas. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan. Um, Mr. Minicello, I see your hand. Hi, everyone. Um, now I just want to say that this was obviously, everyone knows it was a very strange year, but there was a lot of moving parts. And I think a lot of um, um, logistical and um, technological issues that were raised all at once. And I think that, um, you know, Mike being the um, calm, even keeled, uh, supportive superintendent, I think, um, I think did a very good job under the circumstances. Um, you know, I, I really didn't, don't wish this on, you know, any superintendent, but, um, you know, Mike, um, you know, what was new, fairly new to the job, but, you know, being the, um, uh, assistant, uh, deputy superintendent certainly, uh, prepared him, but, um, I don't think these circumstances prepared really anyone, even, even seasoned superintendents, but, um, I think under the circumstances, um, things are going um, in a manner where, you know, people know that the district is doing its best. Um, 
and uh, I'm just looking forward, hopefully, to in the spring and uh, and and when things sort of get normal, um, to see how the district rebuilds. Um, certainly, there's work to be done, no doubt about it, with regard to the district review um, and with um, with um, some funding increases to uh, invest in resources, uh, and now obviously have. Um, one-on-one uh, -on -one devices in everyone's hands. When the kids come back to school and get that in-person instruction combined with the um, strategies that uh, I know Mike and his team are going to put in place to address the uh, issues that were raised, um, I think we're going to be going in, in, in the right direction. So um, I, I think Mike... Uh, did a good job and I have all the faith in the world that uh, we'll continue to go in an up, upward fashion. Thank you, Mr. Mancello. Thank you, Tom. Um, all right, Ms. Asak, you have your hand up. The floor is yours. Thank you. I just also want to echo with uh, what Mr. Mancello just pretty much um, stated. So we were very fortunate to have Superintendent Thomas um, leading us during this pandemic. Um, and I think with his leadership, we were very fortunate to always be ahead of the game and keeping Brockton Public Schools, uh, our families and our students, um, we, we were always ahead, ahead of other schools. Um, I pretty wanna, pretty much wanna state, um, you know, the district review was prior to Superintendent Thomas's um, appointment. And I know we're going to, um, review a lot of a lot of items that are on there that need to be reviewed and we need to make changes but you know superintendent thomas we are very lucky to have you and your leadership and your executive team and everyone with your staff that has led us through this pandemic to make sure that our students again have the one-on-one -on -one devices we never ever thought or imagined that we would ever be able to do that let alone do that in such a short period of time so I just wanted to say uh, thank you for everything and um, great job. Thank you, Ms. Azak, appreciate it. Is any other member of the committee, Mr. Sullivan? Yes, can you hear me, Mark? Yes. I think Mr. Thomas did a great job for what we had to go through this particular year. I'm glad 2020 is over and can't wait for 2021. <laughs> I think Mike kept everybody working and happy. We are not back in school yet, but we're going to be. And when they do come back, the students will be safe and Superintendent Thomas is gonna make sure of that, which he already has. <clears throat> I think Mr. Thomas went one step further and gave out grab and clothes lunches to all families who wanted them since last March 12th. Brockton is now a one-to-one -one district Thanks to Mr. Thomas. I'm glad he reopened the North Middle School, which was one of my goals. He tried to open a K to 12 school in the corner of Oak and Main. Couldn't do it because of the pandemic. And from now, what I understand is gonna be a call center. I'm not sure, Mike. Yep, a call uh, to help tech center, to help. to help people with technology, yep. And one other thing, I was really impressed at the opening of the new communication center, or the new community center at the Garden School. And I think Mike Thomas was great at the 2020 in-person graduation of Brockton High School. Thank you, Mike, for a job well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan, I appreciate it. Mayor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I just want to echo the sentiments of all my, uh, my fellow school committee members. I mean, we're very fortunate to have Mike Thomas be the superintendent of the schools for Brockton Public Schools. He, he moved up through the ranks. He was educated through BPS. Uh, he's just a heck of a nice guy, but he's also really uh, dedicated and, and a wonderful collaborator. And as mayor and as chair of the school committee, it's really an honor and privilege to call him my friend, but more importantly, superintendent of the schools. And um, I just hope that he stays, and I know he will, uh, stays the course. And, and really the, the years ahead are very bright for BPS because of the dedicated staff and all the school committee members, but it starts with the, the guy right now, um, Mike Thomas, that's leading it. So kudos to you, Mike, and 
uh, the best is yet to come. We've got a lot of work to do. So continue to roll up your sleeves and we'll get it done. Together is the key word. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, all right. Does anybody, any other member of the committee want to uh, comment before I... All right. So if, uh, if anyone else decides they want to jump in, let me know. But uh, I'm just going to make a, a comment um, and... and First, I want to thank you, Mike, for all your hard work. Um, you know, you have this ability to, to change course um, as quickly as we need you to. And, and, and that's been really important, um, you know, especially since the pandemic started and um, with new information coming in so rapidly and things changing as rapidly as they have been, um, you're able to, to stop on a dime and figure out what we need to do to go in the new direction with the new information we have and, and be ready to go. And, and uh, that's been uh, really key that you're able to be flexible and, and, and make the adjustments we need to make quickly when we need to make them. Um, and, and the other thing that I appreciate, cause I'm kind of like this myself, so I appreciate this is you always have a backup plan. Um, <laughs> and I think the one thing we've learned in this pandemic time is you better have a backup plan. You can have what you want to do and what you're hoping to do, but that might just not work out and you better have a, a, a backup plan and another backup plan for that. And, and you always seem to. And um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's great that the district is in good hands of, um, you know, somebody who's a, a true leader and a leader that everybody else in the district looks up to and respects. And, uh, but you've always, you're always thinking, you know, ahead of where we are. And, and that's been real key um, right now. And um, so, you know, you, uh, I don't think, you know, I mean, I, I lose track of how many times a week we talk, but um, I, I hope people understand just how hard you're working, um, especially, um, you know, with everything that's going on, that's so abnormal to try and stay ahead of it and make sure that, you know, kids are getting what they need and, getting, um, you know, uh, getting the education that we, that, that, that they deserve um, within the confines of this remote learning environment, of course. But um, so, you know, um, you know, again, uh, like the mayor, I'll say, you know, it's, it's been a, a privilege and a pleasure to, to uh, work closely with you this year and, and uh, as a superintendent, and it's also um, a pleasure to, you know, I consider you a friend and, and, um, it's really been, you know, a great, despite all the challenges, it's been a great year to um, have you as the superintendent and be able to work with you. Um, so job well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Augustine. I really appreciate, I really appreciate that. So I don't know if there's anybody else that wants to. So I, uh, first, I just want to thank you all uh, for the effort you put into this evaluation and the important feedback you gave especially to me, a first year superintendent, it's very important to um, that your efforts into the evaluation uh, mean a lot because the feedback is very important. So um, I'm able to grow um, and, and, and I appreciate all the efforts that you put in. Um, I also wanna thank you for your support, um, your dedication and the hard work you put in uh, to supporting the families and, and the staff and the students of the Brockton Public Schools. Um, and I know that, you know, and I appreciate everything you've said about how hard I work, and I appreciate that. But people need to understand how hard you work and how often um, you are on the phone championing the causes of your constituents um, and just um, how you're always looking out for the best interest of students and their, and their families is, um, is second to none. And you always have been that way as a committee. But I appreciate your support, and I just appreciate my relationship with you because you hear of horror stories throughout the state of, um, you know, superintendents and, you know, battling with their school committees and school committee members battling with each other and um, things just don't get done. Um, but that's obviously not the case here. And I really appreciate that. I really value uh, your friendship and your support and your leadership. Um, I want to thank first all the, my executive team and all the administrators across the Bro Brockton public schools um, and all the staff, the teachers, the support staff, all the staff for what they have done during this pandemic. I know it's in my evaluation that, you know, 15, over 16,000 computers were given out in the grab and go lunches and the rollout of technology and Schoology, um, but that's all done. Um, I, you know, 
I, it's in my evaluation and I, it's in seen in there as I get credit for it, but without the hard work of, of this, you know, the, the staff in Brockton Public Schools, none of this would have gotten done. Uh, and I thank them for all they do to support the students and their families. Um, and again, they're, they're just a great staff and I'm so glad that um, I'm a part of the Brockton Public Schools family. Um, I wanna thank the students and their families for their patience during this long time of not being in school since March the 12th. We know how difficult this is, um, but it's all about keeping them safe and healthy. Um, and, but we really appreciate their support and sticking with us. A um, Couple more things, I'll be quick. So, um, and again, uh, I just finally to wrap it up, I'm honored to serve. Um, in the district that I grew up in and graduated from um, and, and that I've dedicated my 29 year career to. And uh, there's no other place I'd rather work. There's no other place I'd rather be. And again, I really appreciate your support. And the only thing I else I ask, um, the average raise across the district this year for, uh, for all employees is, was 2%. So I ask that the um, committee kindly defer the 0.8% to uh, maybe later in the year or this summer until we get stable and, um, and, and just things uh, get better for us. Um, uh, I'd rather take the same, you know, pretty much the same raises that's pretty much given out throughout the district this year with, um, with all the other, other employees. So um, I would ask that if I could defer um, the 0.8 to a later time when, when we see things getting better. And again, I thank you all. Well, thank you, uh, Superintendent Thomas. Obviously, um, you know, that's not something that you have to do. And I, I think, uh, you know, we certainly appreciate that. And I'm, uh, that is uh, part and parcel to how, why you are who you are and, and, and just why people look up to you because that's certainly not something you have to do. Um, is there any, is everybody on the committee obviously would have to be all right with uh, with that request. Is there any objection to that request? All right, I don't, anybody? Uh, Mr. D'Agostino, it's not really an objection, but again, Mr. Thomas is always putting others first and this shows the type of leadership that we have. And that's why um, we're very lucky to have you, Mr. Thomas. And I, I think a lot of, this says a lot to a lot of the BPS, um, your, your staff, it pretty much, um, you know, this really speaks loud. And I'm sure um, I'd say I, I object to it because I think you deserve a lot more than that. But whatever you're comfortable with, um, you're always putting BPS for us. So thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Ms. Azak. I appreciate it. Yeah, I agree, Ms. Azak. I, you know, in theory would like to object, but obviously, you know, I would respect your wishes because I think you've done the work to get it, but I respect why you want to do that. Um, and, um, you know. Just interject, Mark? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Aldo. Because it's a contract and because the Mass Teachers Retirement System will be reviewing the contract and reviewing the salaries before June 30th, I will have to put that point in. And okay. Working for that. That actually is, is helpful because obviously we need to at least, you know, just memorialize it formally. I'll have Kevin draw something up and, and, and then we'll come back to the committee with it for approval. So we don't, you know, um, because it is a, a change to the terms of, of the contract. So I think, you know, it would be prudent to, to have that memorialized. Um, again, if, if this is what you want, then we'll certainly have Kevin draw it up, but uh, you certainly aren't obligated to do that. And I think, uh, again, to Ms. Asak's point, I want to add to that about, you know, showing the the character and, and how much you put the district first. You were owed this raise six months ago. And you said, we've got bigger fish to fry. We've got bigger problems than my evaluation and my raise. Don't worry about it. And we already, if you recall, everybody may recall, we did an addendum once to push it out to this point. <laughs> Um, and here you are saying, hey, nobody else is getting more than two. Why should I? So um, that's, again, just, you know, speaks more to your character, which we all already know. So, um, all right. If anyone else wants to comment on that, if not, um, then I'll have Kevin. I'll get one second, Judy. I'll have Kevin draw something up and we'll get we'll get it approved and 
Um, we'll go from there. Uh, Mrs. Sullivan. Oh, so um, if he was supposed to get it six months ago, can, are we gonna put it back to then? And or are we gonna go from this point? Great question. And the addendum, I believe that we approved um, a few months back calls for it to be retroactive to, is it July 1, I think? Yeah, yeah. So the That's 2% good. will be retroactive to July 1. And Thank then you. point eight, he's not going to take that until sometime between now and and basically June thirtieth. You don't have a choice but to, to from the from what Mr. Petronio is saying, it sounds like we that has to go through by by June thirtieth. Okay, all right. Okay, Anything thank else? you. All right. Mr. Agostino, just one last thing, so I'm no, I can still, so I don't have to leave the house tonight. I, I want to thank my wife Trish and my girls. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's not easy for them. Um, you know, all the time that you put in all, all the nights you're in meetings. Um, so I appreciate their support. Uh, it's, it's not easy, uh, for them, but you know, it's, um, I appreciate all their support and, um, it's not easy being married to a superintendent or the kids of a, of a superintendent, but, um, they're great and I appreciate all their support. So thank you. And thank you and thank them. All right. All right, if there's nothing else, um, is there anything anyone wants to bring up other under other business for this meeting? D'Agostino, if I could, I want to, uh, I want to thank uh, Mike. I want to thank Dr. Cliff Murray, Dr. Jim Cobbs, Ken Thompson, Jamie Domestico, Frank Vidaro, Danny Vaughn from the school police, and uh, Kerry Cobb, uh, Red House uh, Dean. Uh, as you know, we started the vaccine rollout yesterday at Brockton High. Uh, it's a plan that was generated, uh, I don't know, almost 10 years ago. There's an MOU with the schools and the city, and um, we, we rolled it out. Um, and again, first responders, police and fire were the first ones. And we had 141 shots given out yesterday, 150 given out today. This is saving lives. So I want to thank, uh, again, Dr. Linda Cahill uh, and all the school nurses that have pitched in, Board of Health and BEMA and Dr. Rick Herman and, again, Chief Gomes and and, and Chief Williams and, and really everybody, this is a collaboration. But again, I'm, I'm, really, um, I'm really thrilled how professionally it was done. No hiccups whatsoever, really. I mean, we worked together for weeks. Uh, again, this was a plan generated uh, on a different, uh, different health scare many, many mayors ago, uh, but we had to effectuate a plan and, and roll it out. And um, yesterday was excellent, today was excellent. I actually got a call yesterday from the Globe and the Herald and Fox 25 and Channel 5 saying that they had spoken to people about Brockton and how wonderful it was. So again, I just want to thank everybody. I mean, I know it is a pain and it is a nuisance to utilize Brockton High. I get it. I know my dad worked up there for decades and decades. I understand that. But um, without really without the, the space um, and Chartwells is another Tom Burke and Chartwells, you know, feeding uh, feeding the, the health clinicians and, and the nurses. And um, it was, it was excellent. So I just, I wanted to just take a moment just to thank everybody and uh, rest assured, we will eventually be doing a citywide rollout. We're not there yet. Uh, projection is probably April, but we'll take little steps. And again, thank you to everybody I named and those that I didn't, that still uh, made a very successful effort. Uh, and really the fruit of that effort is, is saving employees lives in the city of Brockton. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mayor, for the update and everybody involved in that. You know, it's been uh, much anticipated by everybody and it's good to see, uh, you know, progress coming on this. So, um, all right. Uh, any other business under the Superintendent Contract Subcommittee? Mark, can I say something? Um, you sure can. I just wanted to thank um, Michelle and Carrie for all the support um, as a first time, first year, um, evaluating the superintendent, it was no easy. Um, it was not easy and it wasn't easy, especially during um, under the circumstances that we're on. Also, Mike, thank you so much for your leadership. I think as educators, the best part as of a evaluation is seeing what's the good, but also accepting the bad and the ugly to get to, you know, make moves to become better. And I think the year working alongside with you, you're a very transparent, honest, person and um, I love the fact that you like feedback and you and you use that feedback 
to improve yourself and improve those around you. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mendez. I appreciate that. All right, thank you. All right, um, well, if there's nothing else, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second, I mean, do we have a second? Second. Thank you, we have a motion to adjourn by Ms. Asak, uh, properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. I will call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Okay. And Mr. D'Agostino, yes. Uh, Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Pretty. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Okay, Superintendent Contract Subcommittee is adjourned and five minutes and we'll be back for curriculum. <laughs>